Hey everyone, it's Katana, aka Katana the Justice, back with another video. To celebrate 60 subscribers, I'll be reading to you guys the second part of a Hudson murder mystery. If you're a returning subscriber, this release is because of you. If you're new, go ahead and sub and hit the notification bell. Now let me ask you, can you guess who the killer is? When the dinner bell rang, Maggie stated, Well, I guess your wish came true, Edgar. Edgar laughed the same way he always did, holding his belly. All the guests made their way into the dining room. When they entered, they saw three estate staff. Except for Edgar, this was the first time the rest of the guests had seen anyone who worked at the estate. The table was set for a king. Every dish still had steam rising from it. The aroma of all the foods warmed the air. A feast it was indeed. The room was only lit by five candles, but another crackling fireplace loaned its light. Each guest took a chair in front of a candle except for Peppa. One of the estate staff had brought one next to her mother's chair. The estate staff did all this without seeing anything except more water. Professor was the first to bring this detail into light. Has anyone noticed the staff hasn't said hardly a word? This feast is welcoming, but the staff? I think not. Anna erupted. I actually appreciate the piece. All day I have people calling me with questions and concerns. Nothing against your exquisite company, but I never get to eat in peace. Edgar laughed. Try raising ten children, and peace will become so foreign it will scare you. The sound of civil work clanked simultaneously. Ten children? Maggie asked. Well, where in the world is your poor wife? Edgar's smile melted off his face and he bowed his head. My dear Tabitha died last year. A fire burned down the only room she was in, the library. She spent over a million nights sitting there reading books. She always chose stories about ghosts and demons. It had always creeped me out. But Tabitha accepted my less than desirable habits, and after staying home to raise our 10 kids, it was the least I could do. Everyone sat still as if holding their breath. The professor took a shot before stating, I am sorry. Long live Tabitha, with a forced smile. Edgar chuckled, but it seemed he almost choked. No time for sadness. I promised Tabitha that I would finally quit worrying and working. Everyone nodded in agreement as they raised their glasses. Meanwhile, Pepe had already finished picking at her plate and was dozing off looking at the fireplace. The embers were looking more like fireflies to her sleepy eyes. Well, the time has left us fast and we haven't even unpacked. Pepe, time for bed. Pepe's eyes widened as soon as she stood up and began following her mother to the room. The rest of the group said goodnight before retiring themselves. The professor asked, what is your room number? Five? Mine too for tonight, stated Anna. The professor walked behind Anna with his hand on her back all the way to room number five. 